like, oh, what a lovely audience. The fucking glamour's on the front row, isn't it? Look at you, beauty. It's like the Real Housewives of Salford Precinct have arrived. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, and some old people over there and Withenshaw fucking darts team. You all right, lads? <laughs> I find you get a lot more older people in comedy clubs now because it's cheaper, isn't it, to buy two tickets to the Frog and Bucket than it is to put the radiator on for two hours. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so excited to be here, everyone. It's lovely. Do you know, I was just in the dressing room relaxing and I was on the phone to my friend Cheryl. In fact, she's dead common and she works in Superdrug. She said, how's the comedy thing going? I said, it's going great, actually. Tonight, I'm actually at the best comedy club in the northwest, the Frog and Bucket in the amazing city of Manchester. <laughs> Do you know what she said? She said, they're all with a frog and bucket in Manchester. That sounds a bit shit. <laughs> she said, have you never thought about going on live at the Apollo? <laughs> I said, I know you stupid bitch. Have you ever thought about working in boots, though? <laughs> We're off, aren't we? And you've got your legs wide open for me there, sir. You OK? <laughs> Wearing your mum's leggings, I see. Hope you've been double jabbed if you're going to sit there like that, yeah? It's fine, I got double jabbed on the way here, actually. The toilet's in Pure Gym, Piccadilly. <laughs> no, it's important to establish the kind of level I'm going to be working on for the next 20 minutes, isn't it? So that's good. Um, listen, now, before I start with the comedy and being really, really funny... <laughs> bitch. Um, I just want to tell you uh, what happened at my gig last night. It's kind of traumatised me a bit. It's all right, I've told you a bit of a story. You two look very scared. Are you all right? Do you want to go and ask for Angela? Okay. Um, cover your drinks, ladies. So I want to tell you what happened at my gig last night. Do you, you all right with a bit of a story? Yes. So last night, my agent sent me to this horrible little villagey gross place. Oh, I've never been there before. It was disgusting. You've probably not heard of it. It was called Birmingham. <laughs> Being heckled by Gollum up there, am I? Fuck off. Anyway, what happened, basically, was... I misgendered someone. Now, this was an accident, everyone. I know it's not cool, is it, Manchester? Well, clearly you don't give a shit. Anyway. <laughs> so, I'd been on stage, and I'd just been really, really funny. Um, again. And I went backstage where the other comedians were, and I said something very simple, what I thought. I said, oh, Sharon will be here in a minute. Would she like a cup of tea? Normal thing to say, isn't it, everybody? Yeah? yeah? Very normal thing to say. Anyway, it's not, because this fucking bitch... This absolute fucking bitch comedian that, bearing in mind, had not said a single word to me since I got there, got up to embarrass me and correct me. She said, I think we all will find that we know that Sharon's pronouns are they slash them. Oh. oh, my God. I said, yeah, I do actually know that. I said it was a mistake. I'm sorry about that. I said, what are your pronouns? Condescending slash cunt. <laughs> Clapping for cunt. Thank you very much. Oh, do you know what I mean? It's hard, isn't it, everyone? Not, not to, like, you know, embarrass people. I've, I don't know whether this was just a northern thing, right, but I used to hear this phrase quite a lot when I was growing up. Give me a cheer if you heard this phrase. Who's she, the cat's mother? Yeah! yeah it was, we were all being told that, weren't we, when we were young? And we didn't really know what it meant, do we? We just thought our mums were fucking mental. <laughs> but basically, we were just being told to use people's names, weren't we? Which is the most polite and kind thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, but I was out with my mum in Asda the other week and she said it to me. She said, who's she, the cat's mother? I was like, mum? It's like, you cannot say that anymore. You cannot say, who's she, the cat's mother? You have to say, who are they slash them? The cat's non-binary legal guardian. <laughs> this fucking gender thing, it's crazy, isn't it? I was watching James Bond with my mum and at the end we had that conversation you always have, don't you, after the end of the James Bond film, who's going to be the next James Bond? I said to my mum. She went, oh, I'll have a think. Anyway, about four weeks later, she'd had a think. <laughs> she said, I thought about who I'd like to be the next James Bond. I'd really like it to be Martin Kemp or Bradley Walsh. I was like, Mum, it's not going to be either of those two people, is it? Because Manchester, we're in a more fluid society now, aren't we? It's more likely to be a black actor or a disabled actor or a, a woman. Yes. <laughs> My mum said, oh, I'm very glad your nan's not here for all this gender shit. She'd be very confused, wouldn't she, if she was watching Coronation Street one night and all of a sudden Ken Barlow was being played by Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so nice to see people out and about. Do you remember we couldn't do live events? Do you remember everything was virtual? Do you remember all that shit? I could not wait to get back out there and do my first live event, and I could not wait to go and watch live events. So the first thing I went to when restrictions were li lifted was I booked tickets to see Gabrielle. Do you know Gabrielle? Yeah. Do not cheer for that bitch, no. 
It was awful, honestly. I, I complained, I asked my money back. Yes. Between the eye patch and the face mask, you just didn't get the full value of the show, did you? <laughs> and now that's all over. We've got this cost of living crisis, haven't we? How are you two coping? Are you both on OnlyFans? <laughs> oh, I thought I recognised that necklace. <laughs> and those tits. Um, no, it's awful, isn't it? I'm, not, I'm struggling with it too. Don't worry about it, babe, honestly. I'm struggling with the, the cost of living crisis. I was buying drugs the other day, right? From my local dealer. No, listen to this. I had to pay for them with fucking Klarna. <laughs> yes, I've just paid off a very substandard gram of coke, actually, in three small manageable monthly instalments. <laughs> Are you both on OnlyFans, really, or not? No? Does everyone know what OnlyFans is? Yeah. Do you know, love? She looks a bit embarrassed, actually. You two should be on it. You could top up your pensions. <laughs> What was your name, my darling? Vanessa. Vanessa. Do you know what OnlyFans is? You looked a bit confused. Do you know what a mobile phone is, Vanessa? <laughs> you know, yeah. You, yeah, well, you can't do it on your Motorola, I'm afraid, Vanessa. I'm sorry. You'll have, to, you'll have to get to the car phone warehouse and upgrade. But basically, this, this is just for Vanessa's benefit, this, because she doesn't know what... Give me a cheer if you know what OnlyFans is, then. Okay. So it's just for you, babe. This is, like, sole information just for you. So basically, don't hide your eyes, love. It's too late now. You've embarrassed yourself. Look at me, quick sticks, Vanessa. So, I'll put it in a nutshell. OnlyFans is basically, you make your own porn, don't you? Don't you, ladies, yeah? On your iPhone. So all you need is to upgrade your phone and get a fucking tripod. That's all you need, love. But now, because of this cost of living crisis, every fucker is on OnlyFans. I was on Insta the other day, reading one of those statement posts. You know, where people, everyone likes to make a statement these days, don't they? Or an announcement, like the celebrities. You know, oh, I'd like to announce our engagement. I'd like to announce our marriage. I'd like to announce our fucking divorce. No one gives a fucking shit. So I was reading this post, it said, Hi guys, we'd like to make an announcement. Times are hard, choosing between heating and eating, so we've had to decide to create our own OnlyFans profile. <laughs> Ew, it said, please don't judge us, already fucking have. <laughs> On that first sentence, quite frankly. And then it said, please, please, everybody, like and subscribe to our hot XXX content. <laughs> I thought, I don't think so. Anyway, I was interested, so I read the post, didn't I? Continued reading, it said, from now on, every night, me and your mum will be doing three live cam shows a day. <laughs> Are you shocked, Vanessa, the extreme measures my parents go to just so they can heat the fucking conservatory this year? <laughs> but you'll be on it, won't you, hey? And then everybody, um, the comedy is going really well, actually. Last year, I left my day job, and now I'm a full-time comedian. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> thank you, thank you. I haven't got time for applause all the time. Um, but now it's official, it's on my passport. And you know when people ask you what you do for a living at like parties or when you get arrested. Um, and I say I'm a full-time comedian, what do they always say? Tell us a joke. Yeah, I'm like, fuck off. People pay good money for this. I mean, not tonight, but sometimes they do, yes. It's rude that, isn't it, to say that? I mean, my friend Cheryl, she's a prostitute. And she tells people what she does for a living. She doesn't offer to wank them off for free, does she? <laughs> she does not. She charges them £2.50. <laughs> £10 for you. It would take a while to get those fucking jeans off. <laughs> oh, my God. But time has just gone so quickly, and I'm so glad I'm doing this full time now. I have to drive everywhere, give a cheer, all the drivers. <laughs> Vanessa's cheering, yes. You look like a drink driver, my darling. <laughs> You're parked on double yellows outside, aren't you? Vanessa, you know when you're paying for the petrol now? Because it's so expensive, isn't it, the price of petrol? Do you just steal something just to make yourself feel better? Oh, please. Is everyone else just shoplifting since the pandemic happened? Because it was fine, wasn't it, as long as you were wearing a face covering? It doesn't have to be anything expensive, just a chocolate bar, a magazine. Got a lady's handbag the other day, that was quite handy. But my friend told me to use this app called Waze. Any drivers heard of Waze? Oh my God, what a fucking confusing app Waze is, isn't it? My friend told me it'll get me to my destination in the least amount of time possible. But I'll get to my destination with the maximum amount of anxiety possible. Coming here today is taking me through country roads, back alleyways, a fucking graveyard. I thought Waze is brilliant. I've saved two and a half minutes on my journey today by reversing through a fucking Wix car park. And it's gone very, very quickly, hasn't it? Because, I mean, it seems like a long time ago now. But do you all remember the first lockdown, everybody? Yeah. Ladies, yes. Do you remember we were all doing as we were told, weren't we? 
We were all, weren't we? It was very strict, wasn't it? Anyway, I was at an orgy. <laughs> Please don't give me that look, Vanessa, because it's full of key workers there anyway, thank you. And it was on a Thursday night at six o'clock, so technically they were giving themselves a clap. <laughs> oh. And again. Anyway, it has gone quickly, because I don't know whether you know this, Frog and Bucket, but we've just actually gone past the three-year anniversary of what has been the most, well, life-threatening and life-changing historical event of all time, hasn't it? Yes? Do you know what I'm on about? You don't have a fucking clue what day it is, do you, love? <laughs> what am I talking about, love? <laughs> Covid. Oh, well, I'm actually not. I'm actually talking about the three-year anniversary of when Philip Schofield came out as a gay. <laughs> do we all remember that monumental episode? <laughs> what a fucking idiot, everybody, honestly. <laughs> Was anyone surprised? Does anyone give a shit? No. We're all more surprised just to do those We Buy Any Car adverts, if anything, aren't we? I just could not believe it would take that fucking idiot 59 years to come out as a big gay, but he couldn't even wait 24 hours to see the Queen's dead body. <laughs> 59 years! It's a very long time, isn't it? It only took him 30 seconds to tell much my Vauxhall Corsa was worth. As he was rimming me in the back of it. Oh, that was, it wasn't really him, it was his brother. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it was actually Alison Hammond then, if that makes it any better. Do we have gays in tonight? Oh, I could smell a couple of lezards over there. How are you two doing? Can you put your hands on the fucking table, love, to be honest with you? Oh, no, put them back down. I'm not a fan of mackerel. Um, no. Any other gays in tonight? There's someone... Oh, there's a fucking like clan of them over there you okay yes i was gonna say there should be more actually because i was on grinder over there and there was like loads of fucking gay i mean very fucking ugly ones to be honest with you don't know what's happened in manchester it was like the hills of eyes on that bloody app <laughs> do you want to hear my coming out story because it's much better than philip schofield's five people do you want to hear my coming out story yeah. that's it thank you honestly right so i never came out as a full-on gay my mum just presumed when she found my poppers in my school bag when I was 12 years old. <laughs> oh, Vanessa, love, do you know what poppers are? Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> Who is this woman? She doesn't know about anything. Um, I'm going to explain it to you, don't worry. Yeah, don't touch your nipples like that. Um, <laughs> Who are you with tonight? Is this husband, client? <laughs> client, she says. She's blinking, I think that means something. Um, actually, I'll tell you what poppers are via another story. Is that all right? So, um, last year, I was at the Edinburgh Fringe, everyone, doing my very successful one-hour solo show. Yes. And when you're at the Edinburgh Fringe doing your show, not only do you do your show, you have to do lots of other promotional bits in the day just to make sure people come and watch the fucking thing. So I got to this gig in the afternoon. When I got there, it's full of fucking kids. I said, and I was like, what's going on? They said, did you not read the contract? It's family friendly. What the fuck did you invite me for then? <laughs> they said, well, you know, I, I, like, what am I going to do now? I said, if I really wanted to get a job as a kids entertainer, I would have got a job as a Prince Andrew impersonator, wouldn't I? <laughs> they said, well, you're on next. They started to panic. They said, can you tone down your material? I was like, um, obviously I can tone down my material. I'm a professional. Anyway. So I'm telling this five-year-old boy what poppers are. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell Vanessa like I told him. He was on the front row like that with his little teddy. Um, so poppers, Vanessa. Do you use poppers, lezards, or not? N no. And was there any gays in? What about you? Oh, and you? Or you just dress like one? Um, <laughs> it's fucking confusing these days, isn't it? These non-binaries. Um, so poppers, basically, is a little liquid the dirty gays sniff. They sniff it quite vigorously, Vanessa. You need to get your nose right in there. And it gives you a bit of a rush. And then, ultimately, it relaxes the anal hole, ready for penetration. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Do you know what I mean? You're very lucky not to be gays, actually. Can you imagine going through that fucking palaver? Can you imagine having to do that, Vanessa, every time you wanted to be penetrated? Eh? They're brothers. That's a bit of role-play, love. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> But it doesn't just end there, gays, does it? Because not only have to sniff your poppers, then you've got to do this procedure called douching. <laughs> Vanessa, you know about douching? Oh, she knows this one, yes. 
No wonder she's so fucking red. <laughs> Douching, for those of you who don't know, is where you have to use like a little water pump to prepare yourself for the act. Yes, I know, I know. So that fucking hose pipe ban wasn't good news for the gays last year, was it? <laughs> Dry spell for many more ways than one. What's your water like where you live, Vanessa? Hard or soft? <laughs> Come on, answer me, quick sticks. Hard. Oh, stop douching, please, Vanessa. Stop it immediately. He'll do more harm than good. It's the same where I live in, London, honestly. He says it all, doesn't it, when you have to descale your own anal hole more than the kettle. <laughs> I feel like this story was going somewhere. I've lost it. Oh, oh yes. I was coming out, wasn't I? I was about to come out. Um, so, we're all with me again, right? So, my mum finds these poppers. We know what that is now. You're, all, you're laughing and being educated at the same time, aren't you? You're really being double-treated from every angle, you. As per usual. Um, <laughs> so, my mum finds my poppers in my school bag when I was 12 years old. She says to me, what are these for? And obviously, I panic, because I think, I don't want my mum's anal hole to expand in front of me, do I? <laughs> so, I say the first thing that comes into my head. I say, mum, they're for um, cleaning CDs with... That wasn't a good idea, was it, Vanessa? Because I came home from school the next day to find my mum off her fucking face. <laughs> Poppers in one hand, a J cloth in the other. She says, what the hell is this? It's ruined the Celine Dion CD and your dad's passed out upstairs. <laughs> and that's how I came out as an official gay, everybody. <laughs> yes, it's good being a gay, though. I mean, well, it's, it's kind of good being a gay, but I don't know whether you know this, but this country is still quite backwards and it is regulation for all gays to complete six months compulsory cabin crew service for budget airline. <laughs> Have you done yours yet? <laughs> I got sacked from mine. <laughs> Something very minor to do with leaving a door open. Um, <laughs> but now I'm an older gay now. I'm all older. I, I had a very big birthday recently. Vanessa, go on. Have a little guess my age. Go on. 21? Vanessa? I'm not going to ask you. I would never ask a lady her age. It's rude, isn't it, to ask a lady her age? How much do you weigh, Vanessa? I oh, know. Um, <laughs> Vanessa says 21, but someone else over there said 40. I was actually... 42! Fuck off! Shouting in the shadows over there. Fucking gremlins. I was, I was actually 41. You were very close, actually, yes. I reckon gays look younger than normal people, don't they? Fuck off. <laughs> How old are you, mate? 26. As I said, gays look younger than normal people, don't we? <laughs> Clearly grew up in a polluted area. Um, do you know what? I am starting to feel a little bit old. I'm at that very awkward age now where Spotify is heavily suggested I listen to Phil Collins all the time. <laughs> and even on the way here, I'll give me a cheer all the other 40s in the room. <laughs> oh, there's more than fucking that, isn't there? Vanessa, you didn't even shout for that. I know we didn't guess your age. Vanessa, I'm doing this thing now that only really old people do, right? If you can relate to it, the people that are 40 over there. You know when you're driving in the dark? It's only really old people do this. You're driving in the dark and you have to turn the music down so you can see better. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is all that about? Enjoy using two senses at the same time while you can because it won't fucking last. And then when I turn the radio on to listen to the music, I don't have a clue about pop music anymore. Do you listen to, do you listen to pop music, Vanessa? Just fucking pretend you do. She's so fucking difficult, isn't she? Do you listen to pop music, Vanessa? Yes, you do. Thank you very much. Who's your favourite pop star, love? Do a lipper, did you say? Oh, I'm glad you said that. Just led me into some material. Do a bastard lipper. I thought that was a third world country. I swear to God, each year at school, we used to have sponsored silence to raise money for the starving, dying children of do a lipper. And when I said that joke once, right, in Blackpool, this woman got really upset and offended and ran out the stage. She went, you're pronouncing it wrong. It's not pronounced Dua Lipa, it's pronounced Dua Lipa. It's like, I'm so sorry, madam. Do I give a fucking shit? <laughs> and Ariana Grande, Vanessa? Ariana Grande. I wrote my resignation letter to Debenhams in the 90s in that font. <laughs> Thank you. It was only a few weeks ago I found out Justin Bieber wasn't even a fucking lesbian. Can you believe it? <laughs> and then I watched The Brits. You know, the last time The Brits was on? Right, I watched it with my mum. She said to me, ooh, I hope the bin bag man wins something. She meant the rag and bone man, didn't she, clearly? <laughs> my mum's getting things wrong as well. I rang her up during lockdown. She said, I can't talk right now. 
I said, why's that, Mum? She said, I'm watching my favourite programme. I said, what's that, Mother? She said, Martin Luther King, the money-saving expert. <laughs> I said, Mum, that speech could have ended up very differently, couldn't it? Anyway, I've got to go in a minute. Hello! Where's your boyfriend gone? Some kind of code for me to follow into the second cubicle for his booster. Um, Because I'm going straight home, actually. No, no, it is good being a gay now, honestly. I mean, mean, when I first started doing comedy, I didn't necessarily need to be funny, because there wasn't many gays doing it. You know, I was just ticking boxes and adding diversity. (laughs) Well, now there's fucking gays everywhere, isn't it? Especially in Manchester. You have to kick them out of the way like rats, don't you? (laughs) Even where I live, where where I live, there's gays everywhere. Even the local Indian takeaway has just been taken over by a gay. Yeah? It's called Papa Don Preach. <laughs> but I am going to end on something quite sad, I know, because, you know, we, we do go through a lot, you know, as gays, don't we, mate? It's not just about being fisted by your brother. Um, <laughs> so last year, right, um, Cadbury's released an advert for the cream egg and actually featured two gays sharing a cream egg and it actually got 20,000 complaints and was taken off air. Can you believe that? Oh, he's back. <laughs> 20,000 complaints of a Cadbury's cream egg advert. I'm not sure why they were complaining about that. They should see what I can do with a Toblerone. <laughs> Guys, my name is Russell Arathun. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. <laughs> Russell Arathun, everybody. As you can see by the tiny bladder amongst us, it's another